Hello, welcome to Scott Plays and the first in a new series of game overview videos. Today I'm going to be talking about the modern Euro classic from Stefan Feld, The Castles of Burgundy. This is one of my all time favourite games. Uh, I've probably played it a couple of dozen times. Um, I'm not sure exactly of the, the number of times I've played because uh, the majority of them were when I wasn't recording plays on BGG. Um, but I have played it online um, about a dozen times and I think I've played it, the physical version, at least that many times. So looking at two dozen, maybe 30 plays in total. Um, so let's, let's start with what you get in the box. Um, I've got a couple of the expansions, um, in fact more than a couple, <laughs> got most of the, the expansions you can get for it. Uh, the game comes with, uh, and depending on the edition you get, I've got the uh, Ravensburger Aaliyah edition, uh, so you get English and I think that's French, yeah, looks like French rules. Um, I know some editions come with the German and they tend to have the, the German title on it. Um, and I, I think maybe the North American edition just has English. Uh, you also get, I think it's six player boards. Um, and I'll talk about the player boards in a bit more detail in a moment. Um, yeah, and then as I said, I've got a number of expansions. The, uh, a few of the expansions are additional player boards. Some of them are printouts. Some of them are um, a sort of a official uh, player boards. These are from the Spielbox magazine. And I, I think, yeah, I think the, the printout ones are sort of championship boards, I think. And then, yeah, I'm not sure quite exactly what the Spielbox ones are. And then, or this set of Spielbox ones, there's a second set I've got which have um, monasteries on them. And there are extra tiles that go with these boards. Um, I think those extra tiles you can use uh, without those boards. In fact, yeah, I don't see any reason why you couldn't. Um, but yeah, normally you'll get six player boards. Uh, the player boards are double-sided. Uh, four of them have the same um, sort of starter board on them, and then all the backs are different. And then two of them, of two of the six, have different fronts. Um, the game plays one to four players, which is why there's four that are the same. Uh, so that when you first play, you all play on the same board. Oh, it makes sense. Uh, there is also a main central game board, um, which again, I'll explain uh, in more detail. Uh, and then you'll get a number of punch board sheets. Um, one of the first things to say about the components is the, the quality of the punch board is not brilliant. It's not what we've sort of come to expect from uh, modern board games. That said, it's not bad. Um, a lot of people complain about the art. They say it's a bit muddy, a bit unclear. And I, I can see that point. For me, it's functional. It, you know, it does the job. There's nothing wrong with the art. It's just, you know, your aesthetic preference, really. Um, I, I personally would like to see a, a deluxe version of this with um, better, thicker punch board. Um, 
because you have yeah, a huge number of tokens. Um, there are uh, so there are hex tiles on your player board. You have um, your estate, and this is divided up into hex regions uh, that are different colours and have different dice numbers on them. Um, the different colours indicate what different types of uh, tile can go in that space. Uh, you always start with the, the dark green areas are castles and you always start with your castle and your you're building your estate out from your castle so every tile you place subsequently has to go next to an existing tile. Um, the light green um, tiles are animals, they just score you points. Um, like uh, a lot of Steffenfeld's games this is a very much a point salad game. You get points for doing just about everything. Um, yeah, as I said, animals are pretty much just points and you you want to try and collect animals of the same type in the same area. Um, there are blue areas which are ships. Uh, these allow you to get goods which you can subsequently sell. Um, I'll talk about that in a little more detail. I'm not going to go into uh, the rules in um, a lot of detail, but I'll, I'll just briefly go over everything. Uh, there are brown areas which are buildings, you know, a lot of buildings. Each type of building does something different and on the player boards there's quite a nice um, breakdown of what all the different tiles do. Uh, when you first learn the game, um, this is not as uh, intuitive as it maybe could be. Uh, I certainly, the, the rules themselves are not difficult to learn. Uh, it's quite a simple game. Um, basically, you, you roll a couple of dice. The, the values on the dice determine what you can do. Um, and yeah, you're looking to the the hex tiles come out on the main player board in uh, one of seven regions. There are the majority of the tiles come out in the the six depot areas, and then there's a central market that has uh, particular tiles that go in there. Um, and yeah, you you're using the dice value to select which depot you can. Um, draw from um, and yeah once you you collect the tiles off the board they go into a storage area on your player board and then you transfer them using another die from your storage area to your estate uh, and yeah as I was saying all the all the different tiles do different things when you place them in your estate and there is this breakdown of what everything does and sort of the I remember the first time I learned how to play the game and I um, can't remember who it was that taught me but I remember them saying that there's this area on the <laughs> the player boards that shows you what everything does and this was this was after they explained the rules and, and went over the, the different things and I looked at it and went okay does it? <laughs> I can't, don't quite understand the uh, iconography. But once you play it a couple of times, it all makes sense and it, yeah, it's really easy to understand, but not until you've got an understanding of how it plays, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, I was, I was talking about the buildings. Yeah, every single building does something different and there is a section in the rules. Um, I got a, a printout from BGG which has all the um, descriptions of what all the buildings do as well. 
Um, that's particularly handy for the lime green slash yellow uh, tiles because these are all unique. Whereas the buildings, there's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, eight different types of buildings. And so you get, I don't know how many of each type, but there are um, sort of sets of those. Uh, these um, knowledge tiles, the yellow slash lime green ones, there's 26 of them in the base game, and they all do something completely different. They're either um, rule breakers, so give you abilities that you can use on every single turn to uh, you know adjust dice values um, adjust the way workers uh, allow you to adjust dice values um, I'll talk about workers in a minute or they are end game scoring um, so yeah that's that's the knowledge tiles uh, there are Mines that are grey ones, they get you money at the um, beginning of each round after the first one. Um, what else? Is there anything I've missed? Uh, no, castles. Oh yeah, castles. Um, the first castle you place does nothing, but subsequent castles, and you can have up to three more, so four in total. Um, they all give you uh, an extra action, essentially. Um, so yeah, you're you're looking to get the the different tiles on, and what well, you're one of the other things you're aiming to do is the estate is broken up into regions of the same coloured tiles, and the different. Um, uh, designs or break it up in a different way uh, and yeah you you want to try and fill those uh, regions because when you fill a region then you score a number of points um, that is determined by the size of the region plus you get a bonus depending on what round it is um, yeah, as I said, there's also goods you can get which live in this space at the top. Uh, those you can either sell. There's a, one of the buildings that allow you, allows you to sell goods or, again, with just a dice action because it, all of the goods have um, a, a number on them and there are six types of goods. Um, so just by getting the right number, you can sell one of your piles of goods. You can you can only ever have three piles, and each pile has to be a single type. Um, there's yeah, there's the the money in the game is silverlings. Um, those allow you to buy goods from the the central market. Some of the knowledge tiles will also allow you to buy other things. Uh, and then there are workers. These are what make the game, in my opinion. Workers allow you to adjust your dice values, so it's not just random. You, you know, you if you pick up lots of these early, then later in the game you're going to be able to place things exactly where you want, and one of the buildings gives you workers. Uh, some of the knowledge tiles affect the way workers um, operate. Some of them give you workers for doing other things, like um, when normally when you sell goods, you get a number of points, which is determined by the number of goods tiles that you're selling, plus a silverling. Uh, one of the knowledge tiles gets you a worker as well. So yeah, these are there's 
a number of ways you can get them. You can turn a die into two workers, and that's the main way you're going to get them initially. Um, and they are, as I said, they are what makes the game more than just random dice rolling. Uh, and yeah, really makes the game more strategic and tactical. Um, so yeah, other components you get are uh, player markers. Um, there are two of them for each player. You've got a score track around the outside of the, the main board. One of them goes on there. The other one goes on this shipping track. One of the things that happens when you place a ship on your estate is you move up this shipping track. This is what determines player order. Uh, so, yeah, player order changes. It's not just clockwise. It's dependent on your position on this track and how high on the stack you are. Uh, which brings in some interesting tactical decisions uh, because if you if you're one of the first players to move up this track you're going to get to be first player which is going to get you the first pick at each um, turn but then if another player moves forwards their player piece will go on top of yours and they become first player. So you have to be careful about when you place your ships. You have to look at what the other players are doing. Um, ships are fairly limited. Um, in a four player game there will be four out each round. So you can only really expect to get one, maybe two ships per round unless everybody else is not going for ships and then you can get loads of them so yeah very interesting the way that works and i um it's a, it's a part of the game that i i really enjoy i like manipulating my position in the turn order by placing ships at particular times uh, and then you get uh nine dice again these uh, you got two for each player colour. They match the the colour of the player pieces, and then there is a, a ninth white die. This is rolled by whoever is the first player, and what that does is it determines where the goods go. There are six docks, and the the goods are randomly put out in five piles of or stacks of five goods tiles each and then each round these are placed out on this um, column at the side and there are uh, basically five um, I think I think they're weeks and days uh, so yeah essentially over the entire game you're going to have 25 turns and in each turn you get two maybe three if you really um, if you really plan what you're doing you might get four actions in a turn but that's rare you're generally going to get two actions in a, you know, an action is take a tile, put it in your storage, or take a tile from your storage and place it on the board. Um, yeah, some of the um, the buildings allow you to get sort of extra actions or half actions. Uh, so yeah, that's the dice, um, and they're also um, the, the score track goes up to 100 uh, yeah, and you have um, a little marker for each player has 100 on one side, 200 on the other side. Uh, when you get good at the game you will be scoring over 100. You will 
probably score over 200 in some games in, when you get good at it. Most of the time you're looking at high hundreds, nearly 200. Um, that's the kind of score you want to be aiming for. Um, okay, and that's it for the base game. I Then, as I said, I've got a number of expansions. Some of them are more player boards. Uh, some of them give you more tiles. Um, there's basically three expansions that give you tiles. There might actually be more now. I've not looked recently. Um, there's the, the Lust Gardens, <laughs> uh, which I think is Pleasure Gardens. <laughs> um, and they're a, a set of uh, additional tiles. Uh, some of them go... They're, they're all buildings. Um, and... Uh, the yeah the, the most of them go into the building supply uh, there are a couple that go into the uh, tiles for the central market and there's one um, knowledge tile which gives you extra points at the end of the game for having that particular building uh, those give you, they work a bit like the castles. The castles give you an extra action that can be, it's, it's essentially an extra die, sort of virtual die that can have any number on it. The, the gardens do a similar thing, but you remember I mentioned the, the white die that's rolled by the first player. When you place a garden into your estate, you get an action that has the value equal to whatever is on the white die. Um, then have, um, and I'm, I'm going through these in the wrong order, I think that was the, yeah, the fifth expansion. Uh, then the second expansion, um, which they're not really called anything, but they've got a variety of, uh, things there's a new animal type that only comes out in the central market um, those are goats there's a couple of knowledge tiles one of them is quite nice because it allows you no matter where you are on the shipping track no matter where you are in the stack you always go first or you can i think you can choose to go first let me have a look at what the uh, the player who adds this yellow tile to their estate is now always the top in the sequential order line up with their playing piece. So yeah, you become the permanent first player. And then the other players go in whatever player order is. Uh, there's one, another, a second knowledge tile that allows you to buy workers, which you can't normally do, um, buy the, with silverlings that is. Um, and then there is a a park building, uh, which again comes out in the, the central market area. Um, and it can function as any other building. So it's kind of wild card in terms of function. And then the other expansion I've got, which I'm not sure um, what number it is. Um, ah, yes, it's the fourth expansion. Um, it's, yeah, it has um, the, the monastery boards and there are special rules there are three monasteries on the outside of your estate and if you connect those up you get extra points but it also comes with uh one two three four five monastery um tiles 
and I'm gonna have to check the receipt. Okay, that uh, doesn't say. Doesn't say what they do. Uh, I'm gonna have to see if I can find the the rest of the rules on BGG somewhere. Um, from memory, um, they've they've kind of got all of the the six tile colours on them, and from memory, I think you can place them anywhere. Um, and they I think they count as that colour for. Um, region uh, completion points and I think they can count as any building for um, end game building bonus scoring um, but yeah I'm not sure I'd have to I have to double check on that that's it's one uh, expansion that I've not actually played very much um, and I hadn't realized that actually <laughs> this rule sheet that I've printed out doesn't actually tell you how those work which is so disappointing I might um, yeah there might be a I've got this printout that I got off BGG that goes through all of the, the buildings and the knowledge tiles particularly good for the knowledge tiles um, there might be an updated one that covers the monastery buildings. I'll have to look for that. Um, so yeah, that's that's the game. Um, it's oh one other thing, I will say. It has the standard earlier insert. <laughs> uh, completely useless. I'm hoping. Uh, either we'll get a, a nice deluxe edition at some point with better quality tokens and a better insert or somebody will maybe uh, folded space or one of the other insert companies will produce a better insert for this game. I keep thinking I'll make a foam core insert but never get around to it. I've got, I've got the phone call to do it. I should just get on and do it because uh, it's completely useless. It has like these six sections in it, and there are more than six different tiles. Um, and like the uh, buildings, the science, or oh, sorry, not science, knowledge. The market tiles and the animals, those are all drawn randomly. Um, there's a certain amount of random drawing involved with the uh, goods tiles as well because you have to create five random stacks. Uh, so it would kind of be useful to have sort of separate wells for each different tile type but you've got these five sort of four small one intermediate and then one huge <laughs> and it's just like i don't know the, the, there is no way to organize the contents of the game in this insert um you can get draw bags uh i think there were some on the bgg store uh, that I know a lot of people use for, for putting the tokens in and so you've got a, a true blind random draw. Uh, I keep thinking, again, I keep thinking I should get some of those. Um, the other thing I've seen people do is make foam core inserts that are uh, just shallow enough that when you put the tokens in face down they won't flip over. So when you go to play the game, the first thing you do is you give it a good shake and turn it over and, you know, and randomise the contents of the box. And then you 
take everything out and you have everything in individual things and they're all face down so you just take stuff out and that's sort of if I'm if I ever make an insert for it that's the kind of thing I will probably do I'd like somebody else to do the um, designing and cutting out the bits for the insert for me yeah because that's kind of the the bulk of the work of it and um, I've got some of the other folded space inserts and they're, they're so easy to put together so that I'd, I'd really love one for castles of burgundy as well um, anyway I'm not sure there's really much more to say about it um, yeah as I said it's it's one of my all-time favorite games it's really good it's it's easy to learn but when you're playing it and it, it seems like you've got two actions and your actions are determined by what number you roll on the die but there are let me see there are uh, one two three four uh, yes in fact again the player boards have a nice little thing on them that shows you what all of your actions that you can do with a dice a, a die are so yeah you've got you've got basically four different types of actions that you can do you've got silverlings that you can use to buy stuff and that can be done you basically one purchase per turn and that can be done either before or after taking either of your actions uh, and with the uh, particularly early on in a round um, you will have multiple things that you can choose from um, off the, the board and in the, the central market uh, and then once you get workers and um, knowledge tiles that are just the way that works then you're getting even more options and um, and yes yeah, so the although the mechanics are really simple and you only get these two actions per turn the amount of things you can do with it um, is much larger than that sort of two actions indicates and so there's a lot of depth to the game it's um it can be ap inducing uh it's not something that i have a problem with um well people tell me that i play slowly uh i don't mind other people playing slowly i'm although i'm i'll maybe rant about it a bit afterwards whilst we're playing i'm i yeah it's I'd, I'd rather play a game with somebody and it take even twice as long as uh, another the twice as long as playing the game with other people um, than not play that game with them because they take a bit more time thinking about their terms I you know I, I one thing I found is that the players that take a bit more time uh, to think through their turns tend to be better players, you know, and that's what I'm kind of looking for um, in my opponents. I want players that are going to give me a challenge, not that are going to, you know, rush to a decision and then make bad choices. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else there is to say. Uh, great game if you don't own it go out and buy it it's really good it's really cheap as well that's one thing it's one good thing about the component quality it's um, 20 to 30 dollars uh, if you're lucky you can find it below 20 dollars I can't remember how much it cost me uh, it was probably about 20 to 25 pounds so yeah I think that's all I want to say at this point um, thank you for watching and I hope you come back and watch more of my videos